Welcome to WDAY Weather and Ag in Focus. So glad you are here and joining myself, Bridget Riedel. I'm the Ag Director, along with our meteorologist, Justin Storm. And we have a great afternoon planned here. We want to spend some time visiting with one of our favorite guests, and that would be Randy Nelson. Randy is the Clay County Extension Educator, and it's always like stumping Randy. What questions can Justin and I ask that can get him <laughs> tripped up? Rarely are we successful in tripping him up, but we keep trying. Randy, how are things with you today? Hi, Bridget. Hi, Justin. I am doing great. How about you two? Doing well. Glad that you're able to Pretty join fabulous. us again. I made the joke last time. We just basically got to make you an honorary show host because you're on with us all the time. <laughs> it's such a fun time. I love our conversations we get to have. I and love I always being on. know when... Well, I know when Randy's coming and I always create this list of things that I want to ask him and then I get it supplemented by those who know Randy's coming on and send me their questions. So I have a few today. Um, first thing I'm going to ask you though, Justin, excuse me, Randy, is what are people asking you right now this time of year? What are the questions that are most prominent that are coming in your office? Some of the main ones are about seeds and right now it's about ordering seeds. The last few years, there's been a big increase in gardening. I think a lot of that had to do with COVID, some shortages in the grocery store due to um, supply chain issues, more people getting into gardening. And it seems as though that trend is not slowing down. So if you haven't gotten your seed order in uh, at this point, you certainly have time, but I would I would get going on that soon. And, and not that we're gonna be short on, on any of our, our fruits or vegetables that you typically would be planting. But if you have specific varieties that you might be putting into your garden, that's where some of the issues can come in because they may be, they may get sold out uh, sooner rather than later. Well, first and foremost, I don't want to take up all the time here. So for folks who are listening, I would like to call in with their questions for Randy. You can do that at 701-293-9000, or you can send us emails, weather or ag at flagfamily.com, and we'll funnel those right out here to Randy so we can ask him. And so, Randy, I'm, I'm started. I, I've got my, got my catalogs, and my question is, Next question is, do you have recommendations on any specific catalog that someone should be using or any trouble with just swiping the seeds off the shelf at the grocery store or a local hardware store? What are your thoughts there on seed quality from any of these places? Great question, Bridget. And the catalogs you were holding up, I have a few of those on my, or on my uh, counter upstairs and, and a few other ones. And when it comes to uh, seed quality, really regardless of where you're purchasing your seed, it, if it's being sold uh, in Minnesota, for example, they would have had to have done a germination test on there and, and go through the quality test that the, the state of Minnesota is going to require. And I assume other states are gonna be similar to that. Therefore, the seed that you're purchasing regardless of where it's coming from, uh, it, it should be good quality. So I wouldn't be overly concerned there. It never hurts, in my opinion, if you can stick with a, a company that's maybe been around for a number of years because they have a, their name is well known and they certainly want to keep their customers. So they're going to keep you coming back by providing you with, with good quality seed. Yeah, I was just going to ask kind of a similar question, you know, does the brand matter because you hear all that you see all the different brands and i saw the catalogs that you were holding up bridget and mine hasn't quite come in the in the mail yet i'm a, I'm a burpee kind of guy so that's where i order my seeds from so i'm waiting for my catalog but we kind of touched on this in the fall when we were talking about gardens last year with all the new hybrids that are coming out from you know there's just so many different varieties what would you say to somebody who's going to pick out seeds when it comes to all the different varieties? What should they be looking out for? What should they stay away for? You know, maybe if they're looking for, maybe I want to be more of a salsa person. I want to have more BLTs. And you got 70 different types of tomatoes. <laughs> right. There <laughs> probably even more than more than 70. There's a, a lot of, a lot of tomatoes. The same is true for, 
for peppers. Um, if you're new to gardening, one thing I would look at, get an idea how big of a garden you're going to have and kind of get an idea how you want to space that out. Tomatoes can take up they're not going to take up a lot of space by any means, but you're probably planting those on, you know, two or maybe three foot centers. And if you have a couple of rows, your rows are probably going to be three, four feet apart, uh, something like that. So that'd be one thing to keep in mind is that space. After that, what you were talking about, Justin, how are you going to use them? Are you looking at, at a tomato? that is going to give you maybe better sauce quality or if you were interested in a BLT then I'd be looking at some of the tomatoes that really have a, a large fruit because they're perfect for for a BLT. So uh, what about those of us who had seed that we didn't use all of it last year if we're carrying it over and and I kept it in a warm dry spot it was in the garage it was up on a shelf in our heated garage so I knew that it was going to be safe it didn't freeze is there anything I should be concerned about that I, I mean I think about maybe doing a germination test on some of that carryover seed but any recommendations you would have Randy for folks who might be holding some seed over if you held it over doing a germination test Bridget certainly wouldn't be a bad idea usually um, even keeping it in a in a warmer location for a year, I, I think you're going to be fine. A lot of the seed that I carry over, you know, if we have, for example, too many geranium seed or sometimes maybe even some corn, uh, onions are, are a little more tricky because it seems like the viability goes down a bit quicker than with uh, some others. But I, I just stick them into a plastic container and I put them in the freezer. And it, it seems like having them in the freezer, you know, since they're alive, it slows down all the biological processes and it seems to stick around or stay viable for a little bit longer. Um, but again, doing that germination test wouldn't be a bad idea. And you wouldn't have to use a lot of seed, even if you took four or five of those seeds or if you could spare 10, put them onto a wet paper towel. You can just roll up that wet paper towel, put it into a Ziploc bag put it in a warm spot and then maybe after five days or seven days, just go through and unroll that and see where your germination is at. The worst case would be that you just have to increase your seeding rate if you notice that the germination percentage has gone down some. I see. Did you say that you put the onions in the freezer or the seeds, all the different seeds in the freezer? All the seeds in the freezer. and. Okay. You know, for me, it's it's worked so far, and maybe there are some seed out there that are are better stored in in a refrigerator. I just got into a habit of of sticking it in the freezer because I can usually find a back corner that it's not being used. <laughs> uh, whereas the refrigerator, it just seems there are more hands in our refrigerator. <laughs> Sometimes things get mm -hmm. uh, misplaced or or taken out, and that I haven't run into that issue in the freezer. You see, because that was going to lead into my question, because Bridget said she keeps them and, you know, stores them where it's warm. And that's how I generally store my seeds in the, in the package in a plastic baggie in the basement. This year, we were in the process of moving houses, and I left all of my seeds in the garage, and well, we all know how cold it's gotten, and, well, they froze. Where are my seeds going to be fine? And what it seems like, it seems like they should be, but maybe do that germination test to see what the percentage of them sprout roots over a week. I would, I would do that. And in some cases, you could even go a little bit longer than that, that seven-day period. I mean, even up to 14 days. But for sure, by then, at room temperature, you should be seeing some germination. But for the most part, mm -hmm. most of the seeds, again, if you put them in a in a freezer. So in your case, where they were in an unheated garage, it shouldn't cause any damage uh, to the seed. The biggest issue tends to be when you get a fluctuation in temperatures. And then if you get mm -hmm. any condensation inside of those packages where they get some moisture, then, then you start running I into see. some problems where they tend to spoil a lot quicker. I see. Well, Randy, when we come back from break, I'm going to ask What's a good seed or good things to start with for those that are beginning gardening? Say, hey, I, I think maybe I want to try this, but I don't even know where to start. What should I get? How many should I get? So let's tackle that when we come back. And I'd love to encourage the callers again. 701-293-9000. If you have any questions, maybe you're debating between these two seeds. Well, this tomato looks good, but this tomato 
looks really good too. Why is this one yellow? This one's gold. Give us a call, 701-293-9000. Ask Randy. He's definitely going to be able to tell you why, and we'll tackle that and so much more when we come back. For rejoining us, 136 this afternoon, I'm meteorologist Justin Storm with Ag Director Bridget Riedel and Clay County Extension Educator Randy Nelson. We're talking all about gardens, what we need to know for the upcoming growing season, seed selection, is it too early to start, or how much time do I got? All of that. So many fun questions that me and Bridget are throwing over at Randy. And if you want to ask him some questions too, feel free to give us a call, 701-293-9000. Now, before we went to break, Randy, we were kind of teasing a couple questions we wanted to dive into for those who maybe aren't very experienced at gardening, or they haven't had a home garden before. Where do you even start? Do you have to dig a big, massive field in your backyard? Can you use a, a, can it be a small garden? Like I said, does it have to be underground? Can you use boxes? What about five gallon buckets? There are a lot of options out there. If, if you're blessed and you happen to have the space, I mean, you could certainly make a, a large garden. Although even if a person did have the space, keep in mind the amount of time that it's going to take because Anytime you open up a, a piece of ground, you're going to have to contend with weeds. And weed control is going to be a big part of, of gardening, in addition to planting and, and harvesting and, and watering. So keep the amount of work in mind. But if you happen to be in town or maybe you are in an area where you're not able to get a, a, a garden in the ground, you certainly could use containers. And they don't have to be expensive containers from the store. Justin, you had mentioned a five gallon pail. That would work great because you can easily grow a tomato or even a cucumber in a five gallon pail. And typically with, with tomatoes, cucumber, you could probably even do it with some of the, the bush type pumpkins. You could mm -hmm. do those in containers. And typically the larger the container, the easier they are to care for because when it comes to container gardening, you're gonna have to worry a bit more about watering because all those roots right. are in that uh, container soil. And on warmer days, when you have a lot of foliage, you have a lot of water transpiring out. So again, the larger the container, the less often you're gonna have to go through and, and water those. Great, and we're gonna head over to the studio line now. If you Again, if you'd like to give a call and uh, ask Randy a question, feel free to do so, 701-293-9000. We're gonna bring in Randy to the show now. Randy, welcome to Weather and Ag and Focus. Thanks for calling. What's your question for Randy? Yes, I'm wondering, how do you oh. save like uh, mar marigold seeds from year to year? Ah, great question about saving marigold seeds. And I used, I used to do that as a kid because my grandma always did that. And once those flowers are spent, you'll notice the petals on there are starting to dry up. And then um, usually when they start to fall off, you could go ahead and just pick off that marigold flower. And if you open that up, you'll find a, a bunch of seeds in there. And they're typically, they're, they're very long. And you could just lay those out on a paper towel or on a sheet of paper if you wanted to. Just let them dry. And once they're dry, just go ahead and put those into an envelope. And then you can, you know, you could certainly keep them in, in the garage if you wanted to or, or keep them inside. If you had space and you wanted to, you could certainly put those in the freezer too, store them in there, or you could even store them in your fridge. As long as the temperature is constant, generally speaking, the cooler uh, the area that you store them, the better off that you're going to be. Also keep in mind with marigolds that if you're growing a hybrid marigold, you can still save seed from that, but just keep in mind that the plants that you're going to get from those seeds are going to look much different than that parent plant. All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks for calling there, Jerry. And Bridget, I know you got a lot of questions. I got I got one more and I'll toss it over to you. When someone's got their garden, if they're doing an above box and they get dirt from their buddy's house who's got a bunch of dirt or you go and you make your own garden you're digging in your backyard should you take into consideration the soil type or maybe the chemistry of your soil in what you want to grow or maybe the a variety of what you want to grow that's going to benefit better or maybe even just do that to amend the soil great question if your soil is you know if you're in say the red river valley 
and, and your soil is coming from the Red River Valley, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Generally speaking, you're going to have a higher pH soil. Um, and, and as long as you're not trying to grow blueberries, you should be in good shape because blueberry is like a very acid soil. I want to say around a, a pH of 5, which is almost nearly impossible in the valley unless you go like through and try acid. to do some... Exactly. You need to do some pretty heavy, heavy amending to get our soil to work. But otherwise, if you get that soil in, a couple of things that you could do. One is that you could add compost, which essentially you're adding some organic matter back into that soil. It usually makes it a little bit easier to work, especially if that soil has a higher clay content. Another thing you could do, you could just get bagged peat moss and you could work that into, again, that's just going to help with the, the workability of that soil because sometimes the regular field soil again if it is high in clay when you put that into a, a raised bed just by itself it can be a little more difficult to work with uh, but it's certainly not impossible to work with and i think having field soil in those raised beds uh, if, if you're creating like a raised garden i think is great and again adding peat moss adding some compost into there is definitely going to be beneficial <laughs> So can I add to that, Randy, that if, because I live in a small sure. town, right? So I'm on the edge of town. It would be very easy for me to take a shovel and a wheelbarrow or a, a small tractor with a bucket and just get a scoop of soil out of a field, bring it back to the yard and fill a planter box. If you're going to do that, make sure you know if that field was recently treated for any weed control problems. And if you have a discussion with the farmer, make sure you know what was treated, what that soil was treated with so you can be paying attention because not all plants will like what you put into that soil. They may not grow well because of what it was treated with. and You may have to wait a little longer before you can plant. So just a reminder, Randy, I bet you get questions about that too from time to time. Yes, Bridget, thanks for bringing that up because it's like what you're saying, some of those in particular, some of the herbicides, have, some can have a pretty long carryover uh, for some crops, mm -hmm. and, and nobody wants to have that happen to, to their home garden. <laughs> Absolutely. Tomatoes, they get a little pessimistic when it comes to herbicides. you got to be kind of careful with those. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So as folks are making their list, I, I, if, if this is one thing that maybe you and I can talk about it a little bit, Randy, I not only make my, my list of what I want to order because I, then this is maybe the next time you're on, we can talk about garden maps and, and why you space things out the way you do and why you rotate your, your plants around and so you don't put your tomatoes in the same place every year. But one of the other things that I think about, what am I going to buy in seed versus what am I going to buy in live plants? And do you come across any recommendations because of our day length of what you would want to see that's started from seed in the ground versus what should be planted as a live plant when you start getting that garden ready in say May or so? Because I've got my list of things, but I'm curious what you're thinking and recommend too. As far as, as transplants, given given our short short growing season, tomatoes and peppers, there there might be some that are, are really short that, that maybe you could actually seed outside. But um, in, in most cases, you're going to want transplants going into the ground and actually if you look on the back of, of seed packets it'll tell you how many days um, to maturity for tomatoes and peppers but for those plants that's actually days to maturity from transplanting that into the garden so certainly for those two it's good to have transplants um, usually for early crops of uh, cabbage broccoli cauliflower um, even kohlrabi I think it's good to have transplants of those just because you can get a jump start, um, a little bit bigger going into the garden. Uh, you can get a little earlier harvest for those. Um, some people will seed cucumbers, which is, is certainly fine right in the garden. If you want a little jump start with those, you can even start those ahead of time or buy transplants at your local nursery. And uh, you should get a little earlier fruiting when you do that. And I'm with Bridget, you. I'm I curious, think about, what's on your list? Absolutely. I am. Uh, the, you're, you're hitting a lot of the same things I am. I think about broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts as things that I want to start as a transplant, not directly from seed in the ground, because our growing season's not long enough. If I want to enjoy Brussels sprouts before frost, I definitely need those to go in as transplants. And then 
thinking ahead, this is the time of year too that if I know that I'm going to be planting those transplants, I might be keeping my extra coffee cans or um, whatever kind of plastic container that I can cut the bottom off and save them so that when it's time for planting, I can put them up as wind protection. So, you know, it's January, there's a lot of snow on the ground, but I think there's just a lot of reminders that we should give folks about thinking ahead. What should you be planning for besides your seed? And that can be some of those protection wind barrier type things to start collecting so that you're ready to go when it's time to plant too. Exactly. And I know some people too for seed starting, uh, you know, you can buy containers for that and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you like to recycle, you know, you can you can make milk cartons um, work to start your seeds. I know my grandmother used to do that. Uh, you could also use egg cartons. Typically the styrofoam ones work a little better just because they don't fall apart uh, when they get wet. But if you if you like starting seed, you don't necessarily want to go out and, and buy containers. Those are some things right now too that you could you could be um, getting those in place. And then once the time rolls around, uh, you can get it going with those. Yeah, that'll be something fun that we can maybe tackle the next time you're on with us, say, February, Just kind of stay on the trend once or twice a month. You join us and talk all about gardens, home plants, and yard. Uh, like I said, well, I just I love these conversations. I'm going to need Randy to review the garden map I'm currently drawing so he can tell me how my rotation <laughs> is and if I have things spread out the right way. So we'll save that for the next time Randy's on with us. Yeah, I think the other thing that'd be fun to go over, Randy, is trans for those that do start by seed inside one or two months before transplanting into the ground, what do you need to do from introducing your plants under a grow light in your basement or your house to outside? Because if you just put them outside, the wind's going to knock them down and the sun's going to burn them to a crisp. So <laughs> I think that'd be really fun to tackle next time. Exactly. Bridget, just quickly, I, I love seeing that you have your garden map drawn out. I have a uh, little composition notebooks from previous years where I have the garden designs and whatnot. Some people call me crazy, but I love seeing what you have right there. That is, that's oh, great. I have, I have all my maps going back as long as I've had this garden at this house for the last 18 years. So if you want to see how my rotation has evolved, that's awesome. we can go through that. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. All right. Well, Randy, thanks very much for joining us today. If anyone wants to get more information from you, they want to ask you a question. Maybe they watch this tomorrow night on YouTube or Facebook. They want to reach out to you to ask you a question or maybe even sign up for your newsletter. How can they do so? They can give me a call at 218-299-7338. Or if they go online, if they go to U of M Extension, they can find the Clay County office and my contact information is there uh, along with my email. And briefly here, I'll give you my email address, which is nels1657 at umn.edu. And they can just drop me a line and I'll be more than happy to sign them up uh, for our monthly newsletter.